In the previous lecture, we discussed the density of states equation, which is basically a mathematical function that gives us the number of quantum states that the electrons inside a solid metal can actually take. So we saw that inside a solid metal, our outer electrons of all the individual atoms are allowed to move around that metal. But we also said that those electrons are trapped within that metal, which basically means in a way we can think of those electrons as being inside an electric potential well, a finite potential well. So basically, although quantum tunneling can in fact take place and electrons can actually escape into the surroundings, the probability of that taking place is very low because under normal conditions, our electrons do not have enough energy to overcome the electric potential barrier that is set by that particular solid metal. So the next question that we want to explore is the following. So if we know the number of quantum states that our electrons can take inside that solid metal, the question is how exactly do these electrons actually choose what which quantum state to take? So we're going to begin our discussion by looking at a very simple case in which we're going to assume that the temperature or the absolute temperature given in kelvins of our solid metal is allowed to go to zero. So what exactly will happen to the quantum state, the quantum energy of our electrons inside that solid metal. But first let's begin by defining a term. So, since the wave functions or electron probability densities, also known as electron clouds, of the outer electrons of the individual atoms inside the solid metal overlap, and because the electrons are able to move freely around the entire solid metal, we can think of this overlapping of electron density distributions as being an electron gas and this is typically called the Fermi gas. So basically in one way we can think of our electrons inside our solid state, inside our solid metal as being a gas. Now let us now explore what happens to our electrons inside our solid metal when the metal's temperature is decreased to absolute zero. So this is absolute zero zero given in Kelvin, so zero Kelvin. And let's begin by examining what classical mechanics will tell us about this situation and then we're going to discuss the quantum mechanical approach. So, in classical mechanics, since we're discussing an electron gas, we can think of our electrons as being ideal gas particles that are moving with very high velocities, with very high speeds. Now, this is the equation that gives us our kinetic energy of the individual electron, and we see that it depends on the temperature given in Kelvin. So, if we decrease the the temperature of the entire system to zero, we see that the kinetic energy of each electron would essentially go to zero and the electron would cease to move. Now since all electrons would have the same exact energy and energy of zero joules in such a case, that would imply that our electrons and all the electrons inside our solid metal would be found in the same quantum state and we know that that actually cannot take place as a result of the Pauli exclusion principle which comes from quantum mechanics. So we see that this approach does not actually give us a valid result. Now let's take the quantum mechanical approach. 
So recall that quantum mechanics basically incorporates the wave particle duality of matter. That is, electrons are actually described not as particles but as waves using equations we know as wave functions that give us the electron probability density. So remember in quantum mechanics we can use Schrodinger's equation to solve for the wave function of any particular electron within any particular atom. And we can use those wave functions to determine what the electron probability distribution is, which gives us the likelihood of finding our electrons within some given region. Now, by the Pauli exclusion principle, no two electrons in any solid metal can actually have the same identical set of quantum numbers. And this means that if two electrons are in the same exact energy state, that means they must have opposite electron spins. So if two electrons have the same principal quantum number, orbital quantum number, and magnetic quantum number, that means they must have two different electron spins. One has a positive one half and the other one must have a negative one half. Now, as we mentioned earlier, recall that since electrons are trapped in the solid metal, we can imagine that the electrons are found inside a finite potential well, also known as a rigid box. This means that when we decrease the temperature of our solid system of the rigid box to a temperature of absolute zero, all the lowest possible energy levels that the electrons can actually take will be filled and each level will only have a maximum of two electrons which each have opposite spins. So as soon, we, as soon as we decrease our temperature to absolute zero, quantum mechanics tells us that the electrons will not have an energy of zero but it tells us that every electron will basically drop down down to all the possible lowest energy states. So if this diagram represents our rigid box, our finite potential well, which basically represents our metal, our solid metal, we'll see that two electrons or a maximum of two electrons can go in each one of these energy levels as per the Pauli exclusion principle. Now once we fill all these quantum states states up with all our electrons, the final two electrons will go to the highest possible quantum state. And this quantum state or energy level is known as the Fermi energy or the Fermi level. So the Fermi energy corresponds to the Fermi energy level which is the last possible energy state that can be filled by the last two electrons inside our solid metal at a temperature of zero Kelvin, at a temperature of absolute zero. Now we can actually use the density of states function as shown in the following diagram and if we integrate from our energy of zero to the Fermi energy, we get this entire shaded region. So we basically can calculate what this shaded region is. And then we can use this value to calculate what our Fermi energy actually is. Now we're going to skip the specifics of those steps and we're simply going to give you the end result. So the Fermi energy of our electron, the last possible energy level of our state in when our temperature is zero inside our solid metal is given by this equation. So N basically gives us the number of our possible quantum states, V is the volume, as in, M is the mass of our electron, and H is Planck's constant. So our Fermi energy EF is equal to H squared divided by 8M multiplied by 2 divided by 3, that's our exponent, 3N divided by pi multiplied by V. 
So once again, we know when our electrons are found inside our solid metal, if we drop the temperature to zero Kelvin, the classical approach tells us that all these electrons will have an energy of zero, and that means they'll be found in the same exact quantum state. But if we examine the quantum mechanical approach, we'll see this isn't actually true. The electrons will not have an energy of zero. In fact, we know from this discussion that our electrons will all drop to the lowest possible energy levels. Two electrons, a maximum of two electrons being in each one of our energy levels. And the final possible energy level is defined to be the Fermi energy or the Fermi energy level that is given by this equation.